Lesson four. The title of the lesson is Strengthen with All Might. Our memory verse, Psalms 29, 11. And it says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. You know, if we can have strength and if we can have peace and we can have the needs met, uh, we can have joy. We can have uh, the other things that we need, such as patience, long suffering, uh, uh, getting along with other people. Uh, how much more do we need than that to be satisfied? That, that is one of the greatest things. The Lord will give strength unto his people. You know, we, we, and as we study this lesson, we're going to find out that our strength don't amount to a whole lot. You know, you can take the strongest man in the world and, you know, yeah, he might have bodily strength, but, you know, that's altogether different than the strength of God. You know, you take, you, you take he, uh, a, 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 a person, he might be able to lift no telling how many pounds of, of weight, and he can pull a, a, a semi-truck or something, you know. But think of the strength that it took to create this world, you know, to create this world. To, the, the, God has all strength. Now the devil, you know, the, we, we think, you know, well, the devil has strength. Yes, he has more strength than we do, that's for sure. But, you know, God has the all strength. The Lord will give strength unto his people. And he's willing to give it to us. He's willing to help us when the time arises that we need that strength and we can draw from that strength. You know, there's lots of times that maybe discouragement might set in. And, you know, we can go to the Lord in prayer and he can give us the encouragement that we need, which is part of that strength that he's talking about. And, the, and he goes on and says, And the Lord will bless his people with peace. And uh, as we... Have strength and peace here, as uh, the Psalms wrote, as the uh, one that wrote the Psalms there wrote that. He was experience what God has for each and every one of us, if we will only accept what He has for us. We have to be willing to accept it. He's not going to force it on us. We have to accept it. That's just like salvation. He's got everything laid out there. And all we got to do is accept it. But we've got to accept it in order to get it. And uh, uh, like I said, he's not going to force it on us. Uh, he, we, he created us as free moral agents. And it's up to us to accept the good things that he has for us or to continue in the horrible things that we see and and endure one or the other i want to read the junior emphasis we can under we can understand god's will god wants us to walk worthy of him to please him and to be fruitful when souls bear the fruit of the spirit did you see what he says god wants us to do that Again, as I stressed before, he's not going to force it on it. He could. He could have done that. I mean, it would have been just easy to have forced it on us. But no, he didn't. He wants us to accept it and to live according to the way he says here. We can know God more and more. You know, as we were newborn babes in Christ, you know, we got to experience salvation when we experience salvation yet, you know. But, you know, we experience that salvation and, oh my, it is wonderful to experience salvation. 
But you know, that's just the beginning. As we live and as we uh, 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 go in our, our Christian life, we can experience more and more of God. You know, uh, I think we have a song, more about Jesus, more of his love, more of his goodness, and, and we can experience that. And Jesus, God is willing to, to bestow that upon us, to, to shower us with love, knowing him, fulfilling what his uh, desires are, through us, whatever that might be, God, God, and we can know God more and more all the time. We can do all these when God strength, strengthens us by His power. And you know, that's what we have to rely on is His strength. We can't do it on our own. Like I, like I mentioned before, the strongest man cannot do it on his own. The strongest man, the strongest woman, however strong they are, they 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 can't they can't rely on their own human strength to get them through. We can do all these when God strengthens us by His power. We have God's power to have God's power. We must be saved. In other words, to have the power of God, we must know the giver of that power. We have to know the giver of that power, which is God. We have to know Him in order to get the strength that we need. In order to get any of the acknowledgments and the knowledge and the wisdom of God, we have to know God. I mean, that's that's like, going into a company, you know, you have to learn that company and understand that company. And you become a better worker when you do that. And that's the same way it is with God. Understand what he has for us. Understand. Follow the directions. That's another thing in a company. You have to, there's, there's going to be somebody over you, you know, and you have to follow the directions and the uh, instructions that you get, you have to follow them in order to uh, make things work. And, you know, if you don't, if you don't, you know, a firing is coming, probably. And that's, you're going to be out the door. Well, if same way with, with God, if we don't follow the, his instructions, why, we're going to lose out with him. Okay, our first verse there. Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit? Paul's prayer for the Colossians. Paul heard good news about the church there at Colossae. Uh, there's a, there was a man that was the minister... Epirus, I think. Okay, say that again. Epirus. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to say it there. He was the minister and told Paul of their faith and love and holy living. Paul was glad. He prayed for them. And you know, we've, we've studied uh, several of Paul's writings there and he was always concerned about people he was always concerned about the Christians whether it was in Galatia or whether it was in Ephesus or Colossae or Corinthians you know Corinthians kind of had they kind of had their problems you know but Paul was concerned about them and prayed for them you know, I read that here a couple of weeks ago that how he has the salutations of the letter or the uh, beginnings of the letters, not salutations, but the beginnings of the letter and how he, he, he started each letter, you know, and, and then how he ended the letters too. 
And it wasn't just a, uh, a, a, an automatic that he write, but it was, a, it was a concern for each and every one of them uh, uh, letters that he wrote. Each one of them, he was concerned about the people there. You know, and that's the way Jesus was when he was on earth. He was concerned about people. Now, there was people that, that tried to trip him up, and yes, you know, he had to get kind of harsh with them sometimes. Uh, but, you know, the love of God was still there. And, you know, that's, that's the way it is with us to have that love so that we can have that strength that God has for us. Let's go into that second reading. For this cause we also, since today we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. See, now that's Paul writing to the Colossians there. Continuing to pray for him, he said, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Isn't that our desire for ourself? Isn't that our desire for the rest of the congregation? For, for people, uh, uh, whether they're in our congregation, whether they're in another congregation, is to be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Knowledge and understanding is very important. If we don't have knowledge or we have the understanding, we're confused. We are confused, you know. That's the reason why we have to have the knowledge and understanding. If we, had, if we don't have the knowledge or the understanding to be able, well, like I used to do, drive a milk truck, you know. I'd be kind of dangerous. I'd be kind of dangerous, you know, if I get behind the wheel and don't have the knowledge or the understanding. So, you know, we can be dangerous or we can be a worker for God in that. Let's go on, verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. He asked God to fill them with the knowledge of His will. Without God's help, we could not know His will. Knowing His will is necessary to doing it. In order to know His will, it's, we have to know it in order, I mean, that's necessary in order to do that. Mere head knowledge of God's commands is not enough. We may memorize scriptures and with that, with, without ever truly knowing God's will. We need to know it in all wisdom, able to grasp God's meaning, compare and harmonize scriptures to wisely apply them. You know, when, we, when He gives us spiritual understanding... We can know it. Then when we read the Bible and pray, He will help us to know what He wants of us. What He wants of us. You know, we, we, we may set out and say, well, I'm going to do this and this and this and this for the Lord, you know. Well, yeah, it all sounds good. But you know, what if God wants you to do this, this, and this? And you're deciding to do this other. We're going to be in a world of hurt. You know, uh, my mind goes to uh, uh, David. Uh, you know, he, he told, uh, I think it was Nathan the prophet, told him, says, says, I want to build a house for the Lord. You know, the Lord's been living in this tent here, you know. And, and he says, I want to build a, build a house for it. And Nathan says, okay. You know, that, that sounds good. See, it did. It sounds good. That was wonderful. I mean, who could have thought of a better thing to do, you know? Looking through it with our own eyes, you know. Well, during that night, or it seemed like it was that night, God spoke to Nathan and told Nathan, said, Nathan, I don't want David to build that house. I don't want David to build that house. You know, that's probably quite a shock to Nathan. When I think, of, okay, Lord, okay, I don't know where you're going, but, you know, okay, I'm listening. And, you know, because David being a man of war, God didn't want him to build that house, but he preserved that for someone else to build. 
Nathan went and told David that. David accepted it. David was able to get some things ready for it, I think, or the way I kind of understand it, got, got some things ready for it, but he was not the builder of it then because God had different plans than what Nathan saw was good, you know. And, you know, who would have who thought building the house? No, we got to put it on delay, God says, you know. Who would have thought that? But no, that's the way it was. And you know, that's the same way it is with our life. We might see, oh yeah, I need to do this, this, and this for the Lord. But then, you know, in the meanwhile, the Lord might say, I've got other plans, you know. And we have to accept them then when that happens there. Spiritual understanding. To understand with the heart, we know that, the, that with the insight the Holy Spirit gives to know God's will, we must know God, as I've already mentioned. We cannot know all know it with natural, unregenerated powers only. We cannot. We cannot know the will of God when we're still yet in sin. We have to be re, uh, regenerated. We have to be come to God, turn our heart and life over to Him. Let Him take control. Let Him give you the strength that He needs. Because if we try and go out on our own to, to do something good for the Lord, we're going to fall flat, flat on our face. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. But then if we do it according to the will of God and with His might, with His glory, with His leading, then we can do the good that God has for us to do then. For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can we know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's found in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. So, you know, we see here that we need to be in tune, in tune, on the same page, whatever other cliche you want to put, but we need to be right there step in step with God. Right step in step with Him. You know how, how when you're as a child sometimes you get a big snowstorm and your dad might be a walking in front of you and or a grown-up walking in front of you and you know a lot of times you'd step in those same steps you know because it's a whole lot easier. Well, that's what we have to do. Walk in them same steps that God has already walked, you know, so that uh, he, can, he, he can help us there. Paul prayed they would walk worthy of the Lord. They were called by his name. Their doings should honor that name, not their own, but that name is what he is talking about. Pleasing him, walk worthy to bear his name, pleasing him in all things. Is it too high a standard? Pleasing God? No, that's the requirement. That's just a requirement. Paul prayed it for the, the Colossians. Uh, the, yeah, Colossians. Colossians. Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Uh, that verse, I think, is found in Matthew there. Might our standard be too low to meet God's eyes? Let's not let that happen. Let's let God set the standard and let's measure to all the standard that is shown on our lives. You know, if we, if we are shown a, 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 a good standard, say that much standard, and we decide we're going to go this much standard, what's going to happen to this part right here? That's where we're going to fail, see? See, because we're doing away with part of that, see? And we've got to be at full full standard. You know, if you, if you want to get something of quality, you want it at full standard, don't you? You don't want just half standard, you know, if you're buying oil or whatever you're buying, you know, you... Well, this has got this, but it don't have this, 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 this in, in it, you know. Well, I think I'm going to look for a different brand, you know, of oil. So, so it's very important. And that's the way it is in our, in our Christian life. Be at full standard for God then.
He prayed they walk or doings would please God and to all pleasing that is please him in all things. Please him in all things. If you're leaving out part of it, you're not pleasing him in all things because you're leaving out part of it there. Their action must be holy to please God. And it's very important that that that, that happens there. In addition, he prayed that they would be fruitful. Isn't that wonderful? To bear fruit for God. What kind of fruit? Every good work. Right? Fruit of the Spirit. Last week we read a, a, some works that God could not accept because the people were not obeying Him. Remember? I think the title of our lesson, Not all that called me Lord, Lord shall enter in. You know, that was one of the scriptures that we, we, we were working, working on there, that we were studying on. But, you know, obeying Him. It says, uh, we, uh, we read of some works that God could not accept because the people were not obeying Him. We have to be in obedience with God. However, God does want good works. In today's lessons, these people are obeying Okay, now the question is, last week the people not obeying, this week people are obeying, it's a different group of people. Which, where do we fall at? Where do we fall at in that, in that situation? Only you can answer that, only you, yourself. They were, to, they were in his kingdom, is what he's talking about, talking there. Works done in his power are fruit that pleases God. Works that are in his power there. Be fruitful in every good work. Yes, God accepts good works from us. They do not save, but they do follow salvation. For it is God which worketh in you to will and to do his good pleasure. Works done in one's own strength for merit. God hates. You know... Like I was uh, the illustration, I'm going to do this, this, and this. If it's not God's will, I think I said God hates that. Yeah. See? Because it's not in the will of God. See how important it is to obey God, to, to listen to what God has for us. But works done in His power to please Him, He desires. Good work springs naturally from a good heart, a heart made pure by Christ. Jesus says, He that abideth in me bringeth forth much fruit. First is the fruit of the Spirit inside, which produces fruit of good works outside. Paul asks God that the Colossians should increase in the knowledge of God. Get to know God better and better. I added more and more. And you know, just, you know, when you're, when you're first married, you want to be around your wife, me, you know, and I'm hope, hopefully that the wife thought the same thing, want to be around, you know, want, want to be, want to know more about, about him, you know, and, 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 and enjoy each other. Right. Well, you know, yet today, we've been married almost 44 years. I like being around her. I love it. I mean, 44 years. And, you know, I'm still learning things about her, you know. I'm still, 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 still learning. Still enjoying, you know, still enjoying. And, you know, that's the way it is with God. We can learn things about God. There's things he... He's not got it hid from us. We just haven't found it yet, you know. We, we haven't went, got to a point where he's ready to expound it on us, you know. And, you know, as we grow and as we, as we live through different things, he shovels more on us, you know. Spreads grace, uh, uh, mercy, strength on us that wow where'd that come from it come from god 
And there's probably more to come, you know. But we're just not ready to take it in quite yet. But there's more to come. You know, I think, I think we could live to be 150 years old. And, you know, Brother Sam's, what, 98, almost 98 years old, you know. He's still enjoying. And I think he's still learning and, and enjoying what God has for him there. Knowing him better and better, or more and more, as we walk with him day by day. You know, you know, we we don't work or we don't walk with him Sunday to Sunday, you know. Just on Sunday is what I'm talking about. But you know, it's every day. And we can break it down. It's every hour. We can break it down. It's every minute. And you can go clear to every second. You know, well, what about the time that I'm sleeping? Okay, we're with God. When we go to sleep, we're in God's hands. You know, we've lived according to the standard that he wants us to live. Then when we go to sleep, we, yeah, sure, we may be unconscious, and not know what's going on. But you know, we're still in the hands of God. The almighty power of God is still there protecting us. And we can be thankful for that. We have the assurance of that. We have the assurance of salvation in our heart. And, you know, when we sleep, we, we're not going to lose that. But, you know, when we wake up, what's the first thing we do? Thank you, Lord, for giving me a good night's rest. Well, if you had a restless night, thank you, Lord, for taking me through the night. You know, what do you have for me today? You know, I know that you have work for me to do today. Help me to be able to do that. We must know him. For to know him is, eat, is life eternal. Knowing him is more than knowing facts about him. You know, that's another thing. When you're, when you're uh, married, you know your spouse. You don't just know the facts about her. Now, you take George Washington... I never met George Washington, and I know some facts about George Washington, but I, I don't know what George Washington was like, you know. But I know what my spouse is like, you know. And so that's, that's what he's talking about. It's n God is not a historical figure. God is life. God is strength. That's, that's, that's what the difference is. God, you are part of God when you are accepted. And, and when you uh, repent and obey what he has, you're part of God in that. <laughs> to know him requires his presence in you. His presence yeah. in you is to know him. Brought about by surrender and obedience to him. We need to know Him. Jesus said to know Him is life eternal. Knowing facts about God is not the same as knowing God. To know Him, we must yield to Him. We must talk with Him. We must obey Him. There's several steps there that walk, that's hand in hand. We have to do them all according to be able to be part of Him in that. Paul presents a high standard here. Is it too high? Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. When he wrote, what he wrote was inspired by God and is his word to each of us today. You know, we can take the words that Paul wrote there and apply them to our lives. Make sure that we're living according to what he is, he's telling us here. Because it all lines up with God, with the, with the standard that God God and Jesus has for us. How could they and how can we live up to it? Through the strength. What's the title of our, our, of our lesson there? Strengthened by the Almighty. Strengthened with Almighty. That's the only way we can do it. We, I wrote also there, not on our own. The question was, how can they and how can we live up to this? What, what he's talking about. It's not on our own. It's not on our own. You know, I've tried it, and it don't work. But it's through the strength 
of the power of God. Let's go to Colossians 1, 11. There's four, four words there in that, in that uh, starting that verse there. It says, strengthen with all might. Did you catch that? That's the title of our lesson there. I think that's where they probably got the title of our lesson right there. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patient and long-suffering with joyfulness. God's power gives strength. God's all-powerful. Uh, uh, which one of the words... Uh, Onempathoth, um, um, which one of them is all power? Brother Bayless, can you help me out there? One of the old words, Onempathoth. And... O... Onempathoth means all power. Means all power. That's, you know, if it's all power... How can anything be more powerful than that? It's impossible. It's all power. God's power gives strength. He's willing to give it to us. He's willing to give us that power too. Now how could they or we do these good things? As we asked last week, how can we know and do the will of God? Paul prayed that the Colossians would be strengthened with all might, just like that verse 11 said, all they needed. And you know, that's one thing about God. He knows exactly how much to dole out to us, what we need. You know, if, we, if he doles out, would dole out too much, you know, it might give us a big head, you know, thinking, oh, you know, I can do this on my own. Now, we got to be very careful with that. We have to look to God for our strength. When the strength is given, we got to look to God and thank God for it because we can't do it ourselves. I've already mentioned that. We can't do that on our own. It's all through the power of God. What is, what is being accomplished? What you accomplish is only what God allows you you to get done and all praise goes to God for that. Paul prayed that Colossians would be strengthened with all might, all they needed. With all might they could do anything God asked. Wouldn't you say that? With all might they could do anything God asked. Okay? Is he uh, um, uh, does he Think, does God think more of these Colossians than He does of us? Okay, well, if uh, I see some heads not being not not in no, with all might we could do anything God asks. Then don't don't you think that would work? Sure. The only thing we got to make sure that we're right in the center of God's will. That's what we got to do. But He's no respect to person. He's no respect to these. No more respect to person of these Colossians than He is the church here in Lawton or anywhere else, you know, any congregation. Where would the strength come from? Not from me, not from the pastor, but from God. Would God just make their strength grow? grow? Would God just make their strength grow? No, our strength is far too weak to even do God's will. Our strength, did you catch that? Our strength is far, 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 far too weak. He, now, I, I, I was telling you, it didn't make any difference whether you're strong, robust, or what. It's far, far, far too weak to do God's will. It takes the strength of God to be able to do that. And you know the weakest person. You know, we like to talk about the strongest person. Well, what about the weakest person that may be in a wheelchair and maybe have, have problems with, with bones or what, muscles or whatever? They can be just as strong, though, too. 
God does not, God is not over, God is not a respect a person in that respect either. That if that person's doing the will of God, he can be just as strong as, as anybody a going. Don't you remember? There was a man that wrote a lot of our songs, Brother Naylor. He wasn't very strong after he had his accident. He couldn't even get out of bed. But you know, he done what God wanted him to do. And look at look through our song book and how many, how many songs was written by him? A lot of them, you know. That's what he done. That's what he could do. That's what God laid on his heart to do. And he done that accordingly. You know, go ahead. Okay. All my, yeah. Okay. Uh, unto all patience and long suffering. Unto all patience and long suffering. They're equal. Equal enough. Right. That's my, that's my, all the might that's available. I mean, all the patience and long suffering you need. That's real strength. That is real strength. It's not physical strength. Right. Right, right. Okay, no lack of God, but if there is lack, it's because of us. And so that's that's true. That is so true. All strength. It's not the muscles. It's not the muscles, but it's it's what God has for us. That's true. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. That's found in John 15 and 5. Our strength is the wrong kind of strength. Our strength. God gives might according to his glorious power, his own strength. How much does he he have? Well, I think that verse said all. All? Okay. All right. I think we all agree with that. What what power made the world? That all power. That's why it was. Made the world. You know, made this planet that we live on. But then it made the sun and it made all the planets and made all the stars and the moon. And, and we don't even know what all's out there. God, but God, God knows. That's what he's talking about there. All power made. What power keeps the sun, moon, and stars in place? That same all power. That same all power there. What power raised Jesus from the dead? Thank God. Thank God. God had mercy on us. That all power had mercy on us to raise Jesus from the dead. Jesus said he has all power in heaven and in earth. That verse found in uh, Matthew 28 and 18. It is this power that he gives to his people. It is to make us able to do what he asks. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Philippians 2 and 13. With his divine power, he also gives us patience and long-suffering and joyfulness. You know, patience... You know, there's some people that just seem like they're born with patience. You know, no, they're not. But, I mean, you know, it seems like they're more patient than other other people. I um, I knew a man up there in Missouri that he could have trouble, and he always had a smile on his face, you know, even through the troubles and whatever. Well, he always, always had a smile. And then there was other people that have a little bit of trouble, and... And they were down in the dumps a lot of times, you know. And and but this guy well, always didn't matter. Seemed like seemed like cow could kick the milk bucket over, and yeah, he'd just go on, pick it up, and clean it up, and go about his own business, you know. Patience, patience. You know, God gives us them that kind of patience. There, His power will make us able to do right when tempted to do wrong. Did you, did you catch that? You know, 
following in the footsteps of Jesus. If we ask Him, we will have. The, uh, he will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape. That's found in First uh, Corinthians ten and thirteen. There is therefore, there is therefore, catch this. There is therefore no excuse for sin. There is therefore no excuse for sin. If a person sins and he meets it at the judgment day, there's going to be excuses. But what excuse holds up? There is none. There is none. God took away the excuses when he sent Jesus. God took away the excuse of when he sent Jesus to die on the cross. Verse 12 says, Giving thanks unto the Father which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even, even the forgiveness of of sins. Thanks to God for salvation. By saving them, the Colossians, we can uh, take it to us too, God opened a way for the saints at Colossae to be strengthened with His might. Um, By saving us, God opened a way for us to be strengthened with his might. We can take that personally like that. That doesn't do any harm to the, to the scriptures. We just have to make sure that we're doing everything that God intends for us to do. We cannot have his power without knowing him. I think that's already been repeated in the lesson already today. But keep that in your mind, in the forefront of, uh, of your mind. Jesus is 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 power in us when he saves us the holy spirit is more power in us when he comes in saved people are partakers of the inheritance of the saints they are free from the power of darkness are put into the kingdom of jesus are redeemed through his blood and have forgiveness of sin. You know, we were once in the kingdom of darkness. That kingdom had power over us that we couldn't conquer. There's no way we could conquer that that power of darkness on our own. There's no way. There's no way. But you know, with Jesus coming and giving his life on the cross... That paved the way and is a super highway for us to be able to get out of there if we just come through the way that God has prepared for us there. When we have these, and he's talking about the, uh, uh, well, they are freed from the power of darkness, are put into the kingdom of Jesus, are redeemed through the blood and have forgiveness of sin. When we have these, You will thank God. And you know we do. We can thank God every day for salvation. God God does not get tired of hearing us thanking Him for salvation. Because it's an ongoing thing. It's just, it, 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 it keeps you. You know, thank you Lord for keeping me today. You know, that's, He's... He's okay with that. He's fine with that. He wants that, you know. Then we can be strong in Him. That's that's one thing. We can grow and be strong in Him. The way, uh, then we can be strong in Him. The way is to repent and believe on Christ. That is, we've already learned that in the previous lesson there. Repent and believe in Christ. So that you can enjoy what God really has for you. You know, he may have something different for me than he does for you. But he'll have something different for you than he does for me. And you know, whatever it is, it's always good. 
It's always good. It's always what God wants us to It's always what God wants us to do and to further his kingdom whatever he has for whoever he has it for. And we just have to be ready and willing to fulfill our place because no one else can fulfill the place for us. My wife can't fulfill my my place. I can't fulfill her place. We've got to do it each of our own there. I'm going to leave that with you. And uh, and uh, 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 may God bless and keep each one of you there.